Section four of the Rubaiyat of Umar Khayyam by Frederick Rolfe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Verses three hundred and one to four hundred. I drink wine, but I do no disorders. I stretch forth mine hand only for the cup. Wouldst know why I worship Nectarius Dionysus? that I may not imitate thee and worship myself. Hast thou discretion to hear me telling thee, in brief, what man hath been from the beginning? A wretched thing, formed of sorrow's clay, who, during a few days, snatcheth a few morsels here, and lifting his foot, away doth go. I chose the pitcher's brim for my place of prayer, the use of wine hath made me worthy of the name of man. In mine inn I regain time lost in the mosque. Man is the fine finial of all creation. Man, to the eye of the sage, is the point of divine regard. The orb of the earth is like a ring, of which undoubtedly the carbon bezel is man. The elation of mine own madness, here, transporteth me with joy. From my low estate it causeth me to raise mine head to heaven. Nathless, when all is done, behold me, here, freed from my body's prison, returned to dust from whence I came. If I have eaten during the days of Ramazan, deem not that I have done it inadvertently. The dull fatigue of fasting hath so well transformed into nights my days that I have always believed my breakfast eaten. Alway mine head is drenched in wine. The presence of the wine cup is my sole enlivening companion. Cease from thine admonitions, O penitent fool. I adore Chrysochemus Iarchus, and the lips of my lover accord with my desire. It is the time of roses. I desire to give effect to one of my ideas. I desire to do a deed in defiance of the law of Al-Quran. I desire to spend some days with my lovers of the ruddy velvet cheeks, sprinkling rosy wine upon the turf to transform the mead into a field of tulips. Seeing that joy hath me in possession, here, giving to my countenance the radiant whiteness of the steeds of Phoebus, I delight in sitting in a meadow with lovers who have velvet cheeks, where I may feed with them on this verdant hashish, before that I return beneath the verdure of the earth. Never do I taste with joy a drop of water, but instantly the hand of sorrow proffereth her bitter draught. Never do I dip a piece of bread in salt, but instantly the salt doth open mine heart's wound. Take care, take great care, that thou makest no noise in the tavern. Pass in, but avoid disorder. Sell thy turban and thy book for wine. Pass by the madrasa, but do not linger there. Each day at dawn to the tavern I would go. I would go even with hypocritical calendars for my companions. Thou who knowest the inmost secrets of the heart, grant me the gift of faith, if thou wouldst that I should pray. The cares of this world I value not by so much as the value of a barley corn. How happy am I! If I have anything to my breakfast, I have nothing to my dinner. How happy am I! Seeing no crust to be sent for me from the kitchen, I importune no one with my prayers. How happy am I! Never, for a single day, have I been free from worldly fetters. Never, for a single instant, hath contentment graced my life. Long ago, I served my apprenticeship to human changefulness. Yet I am master neither of this world nor of the other. One hand doth grasp the cup, the other, Al-Koran. 
Behold me making obeisance, now to the law, now to the unlawful thing. Beneath the azure vault of heaven, I am thus not all infidel, nor all Muslim. Salute Mustafa for me, and say, with due respect, My lord Hashemite, why doth the law allow the sour drink, Daug, and forbid pure wine? Salute Khayyam for me, and say, O silly Khayyam, when have I forbidden the use of wine? To sages it is allowed. Only fools may not drink it. Thou, who night and day dost covet the good things of the world, thou thinkest not of the terrible day. Meditate, then, upon thy latest breath. Use thy wits again, and see how time doth treat a man. Thou, man, who art the last work of creation, refrain an instant from pursuit of gain and loss. Take the cup of wine, which ever-living Ganymedes doth extend to thee, and so gain liberance at once from care of this world and of the next. If thou knowest what to think concerning the rolling of the rolling heavens, thou wilt know two kinds of men, who know their good side and their bad, and a third, who have no knowledge of themselves, nor of worldly things. Let the weight of this changeful world lie lightly on mine heart. Let no man discover the blameful deeds of me. Let me be happy today. Tomorrow let me be such as thou wilt deem worthy of pardon. To him that taketh count of human change, joy, grief, and pain are one. Worldly good and worldly ill must some day have an end. What doth it matter, then, whether all be grief or joy? Now that the bulbul chaunteth in the grove, think of naught but of the cup in drinker's hands. Lift up thine heart, for full-blown roses breathe the breath of joy. Come, have thy revenge, for a day or two have thy revenge on the pains that thou hast suffered. Regard this solid cup, it encloseth a soul. Some speak of jasmine, bearing blooms of the Judas tree. What have I said? The glittering purity of the wine hath led me into error. It is not a cup, but diaphanous crystal, enclosing liquid fire. Leave the cares of this flying world. Arise with joy, and pass in gaiety this life, enduring but an instant. For, if the favour of heaven had been true to other men, their turn of pleasure would not have fallen to thee. Hear, O man, who hast not sat at the feet of the aged. Vex not thyself by cause of the rolling heavens, which have neither face nor fundament. Be content with thy lot, and as a quiet observer in the world, Mark the diverse workings of man's fate. Earnestly strive to be pleasant to men, elate with wine. Take Khayyam's good advice, O lover of me. Make well the beginning of fasting and of prayer. Drink wine, steal and thou wilt, but do good. Justice is the soul of the universe. The universe is the body whose senses are the angels, whose limbs are the heavens, the elements and things created. Behold the eternal unity. All else is but deceit. At Hestern Eve, in the tavern, my heart's lover and my soul's enravisher offered the cup to me with an enchanting air of sincerity, of desire to please, inviting me to drink. No, quoth I, I will not drink. But to me he made answer, Drink, quoth he, for the love of mine heart. Wouldst thou have the universe submissive to thy will? Then occupy unceasingly in making thy soul strong. Share mine opinion, which consists in drinking wine, 
and in caring not at all for worldly things. Sages have sifted all this world of dust, where naught constant doth remain, and they have found no pleasant thing there, saving lovely faces and rubious wine. To the crime of the rolling heavens in their clarity, to time's unalterable motion, granting favours only to the abject, it is true that my cheeks are hollowed like a cup that brims with tears, that mine heart is like this flagon, full of blood. Ere Hestern dawn, I sat on the bank of a brooklet with my sweet lover and my cup of rosy wine. Raising the cup before mine eyes, I saw it as a shell, whose hidden pearl sheds such a blaze of light that the herald of the sun, starting out of sleep, announced awakening dawn. Forget the day that hath been cut from thy life. Grieve not thyself for to-morrow, which is yet to come. Trust not to that which is, nor to that which is no more. Live for the moment, happily, and cast not life upon the wind. Hast thou no shame in giving thyself to corruption? Hast thou no shame in neglecting commands and forbiddance? I grant thy success in thy grasping the riches of earth, but what canst thou do, save to leave them, when thy turn shall come? One man I have known who withdrew from the world to the wilderness, he was not an heretic, nor a Muslim. He had neither riches, nor faith, nor God, nor truth, nor surety. Who in this world, or the next, hath a courage like his? Men in their multitudes muse on beliefs and on faiths. Others, twixt doubt and knowledge, in a torpor lie. Sudden, then shouted the vigilant mage, O oh, fools, the road you seek is neither here nor there. Among the stars there is a bull called Parvin, another bull lieth under the earth. Open intelligent eyes, the eyes of the men who know, and observe this handful of asses betwixt two bulls. To me hath been said, Drink a little less wine or furnish a reason why thou shouldst not renounce it. My reason is this. Wine hath the face of the morn, the face of my lover. Deal righteously then, and say whether there can be a better reason. If, on the heavens, I possessed the power that there their maker exerciseth, then would I blot them out, and, of their relics, others build to mine own fashion, where, in freedom, man might labour to achieve his heart's desire. My poor heart, full of grief and folly, not yet hath emerged from that methystine lake wherein the love of my fond lover did submerge it. On the day, when this wine of love was served to man, undoubtedly my share was drawn from mine heart's blood. To drink wine, and to seek fair lovers, is a wiser work than to play the hypocrite and seeming saint. For if for drinkers and for lovers hell doth gape, not one would wish to enter paradise. Despise the speech of wantons, but take the limpid wine from the hands of her whose charms none may deny. One by one, all who have come into this world, are gone, and no man can show thee one who hath returned. An unneedful resolve is to blight with grief a joyful heart, to crush mirth's moment with the stone of torment. Seeing the future to be arcane, the needful is a cup of wine, a cherished lover, and leave to rest at will. Fine it is to have good fame, shameful to complain of heaven's injustice, better far to win elation from the juice of grape than to boast of false devotion. 
Mercy, O God, for my poor heart in chains. Mercy, for my breast so full of sorrow. Mercy, for my feet, which to the tavern lead me. Mercy for mine hands that grasp the cup. Deliver me, O God, from disputing of the greater and the less. Deliver me from self, and let me occupy in thee. Seeing my reason to be sound, I know both good and ill. Enchant me, then, and of that knowledge rid me. The rolling heavens will roll when thou, a lover of me, and I are dead. Against my life and thine they do conspire. Come then, and rest with me upon the sward, for we shall rest but a little while before that fresher sward from thy dust and from mine shall grow. When thy soul and mine are gone away, they will place a pair of earthen tablets on my tomb and on thine, Later, to cover other tombs with other earthen tablets, in the potter's mould they will cast thy dust and mine. On this tower, whose splendour rivaleth the stars, on this tower, where a sequence of sovereigns have rivalled each the other, I saw a turtle dove alight, and from its ruined battlements I heard her cry, Where are they? Where are they? What hath benefited by my coming here? What advantage springeth from my going hence? What have I left of the heap of hopes conceived? Where is the smoke of all the perfect men who have consumed themselves to dust beneath the orb of heaven? Thou, whose lips hide the water of life, let not the lips of the cup kiss thine. May I forfeit the name of man if I fill myself anew with the flagon's blood. For who is this cup that should dare to press its lips to thine? Such as I am, thy might hath made me. Laden with thy benevolence and benefit, I have lived an hundred years. That I may sin, I wish to live another hundred years, to know whether the sum of my sin could outweigh thy mercy's store. Take in thine hand the cup, carry the calabash away, and look upon the meadows and the banks of brooks, O enchanting lover of me. For many forms, with lovely faces radiant as moons, have been changed an hundred times to cups, and hundred times from calabashes. I will buy old wine and new wine, and I will sell the world for a couple of grains of barley. Dost know where thou wilt go when thou art dead? Go where thou wilt, but bring me wine. What man in this world hath done no sin? How would one who hath not sinned have lived? If thou dost punish me with ill, by cause that I am an ill-doer, what is the difference betwixt thee and me? Where is that of the rubine lips? Where is the gem of Badakshan? Where is the wine full of fragrance that giveth repose to the soul? The faith of Islam forbiddeth it, they say. Drink wine, O lover of me, and have no fear, for where dost thou see Islam? To refrain from all that is not mirth is well. To take a cup of wine from the hands of lovely girls who live in the palaces of kings is better. But best of all is the rapture that wine doth bring, with scorn for the calendars, an oblivion of self. In sooth a throat full of wine is worth all there is twixt moon and fish and heaven and hell. Better it is for thee to shun the study of knowledge and of godliness, to let thine hands caress the hair of a ravishing lover, to fill thy cup with the vine's best blood, before that death shall pour out thine. Rest, O lover of me, in the midst of the human change. Vex not thyself in vain, by cause of the march of time. 
when the wrapper of thy soul to rags is torn what matter thy words thy deeds thy stains thou who no good hast done but ill and after hast sought refuge with thy god beware of trusting in thine hope of pardon for he who hath done nothing no more resembleth him who hath done ill than he who hath sinned resembleth him who hath done nothing good or ill measure not thy life by more than threescore years set thy foot nowhere where no wine is seeing that thy skull hath not yet been made into a pitcher go on thy way with thy calabash ever on thy shoulder and thy cup in hand the firmament is like a bowl that hath fallen on our heads keen-sighted men are humiliated and deprived of strength thereby but see the friendship reigning twixt the flagon and the cup lip to lip are they and from one to other floweth blood i have swept the tavern threshold with my beard i reflect no more on the good or ill of this world or of the next i see them like two balls rolling in a ditch with which when wine hath brought me sleep i occupy myself no more than if i saw a grain of barley roll the spray complaineth that it is parted from the ocean the ocean laugheth to the spray and saith we both are one beyond us there is none but god and between us the gap is almost invisible how long shall i vex myself to know whether i know or whether i know not whether i ought to pass this life in gaiety or whether i ought not fill another cup of wine o ganymedes for even whether i shall exhale this breath but now inhaled i do not know be not a prey to the grief of this restless world let not thy soul remember those who are no more lose not thine heart save to a lover of mellifluous lips and sylph-like form never let wine be lacking cast not thy life upon the wind how long wilt thou speak of the mosque of fasting of prayer seek the tavern sooner and become elate with wine even though thou hast to beg the means drink wine drink wine o khayyam for soon of thy clay they will make cups or bowls or pitchers this o mage is the reason why in this palace of life thou oughtst to spend thyself in using rosy wine that each atom of thy dust which the wind shall bear away may fall deep dyed in wine upon the tavern threshold see how that zephyrus maketh the roses bloom hear the bulbul's joy by cause of their resplendent beauty rest then in their flowery shade for often have they left the earth and are come again here am i surrounded by my lovers here am i delivered from the grief which time inflicteth here am i free tranquil and elate with wine for i have drained the cup of love suppose that thou hast lived here as thou willest what of that suppose that thy last day hath come what of that i grant thee to have lived an hundred years with all thy wishes satisfied suppose thyself to have another hundred years to live well and what of that dost know why among men cyprus and lily are considered free by cause that the first is silent though it hath ten tongues by cause that the last which hath an hundred hands doth keep them shut enrich my cup o ganymedes with delicious wine with juice alluring as an enchanting lover with nectar which is like a chain of twisted links entwisted holding sage and fool alike 
in sweet captivity. Alas, that life should pass in uselessness, that at every mouthful I should break the law and soil my soul. Blackened am I, in that I have not done as thou commandest, and what shall I be, seeing that I have done what thou commandest not? Vex not thyself for the changes of this changeful world, but call for wine, and caress thy lover in a closer clip. For he, whom to-day his mother beareth, to-morrow vanisheth from earth, and to the void returneth. Now I will renounce all, wine never, for I can repay myself for all but wine. Could I become Muslim and renounce old wine? Never. All of me is drowned in love, enraptured, adoring Dionysos Piripaius. All of me is in the tavern, whence I have banished all things, good and ill, all thoughts, all musings. Then ask me not for an opinion, for I am elate with wine. Confident in divine goodness, I keep myself from knowing obedience or disobedience. For in the light of thy goodness, he who doeth nothing is peer of him who doeth well. With strange features hath my life been formed, wherein strange changes do arise. Better than I am I cannot be, for thou hast drawn me from thy crucible, even as I am. I have broken all my vows, I have closed upon myself the door of good fame and of ill. Blame me not, then, when I do senseless deeds, for all of me is drowned in the wine of love. A throat full of old wine is worth more than a young empire. It is well to renounce everything except old wine. A cup of this nectar is to be preferred an hundred times to the kingdom of Feridun. The very earthen cover of the jar is more precious than the crown of King Crossrov. Thou canst never attain to knowledge of the hidden secrets, O lover of me. Thou canst never reach the summit to which the daring sage hath soared. Then be resigned to compass for thyself a worldly paradise, with cup and wine. For the true paradise, wilt thou achieve it, ever or never? Those who have gone before, O Ganymedes, lie in the dust of pride. Drink wine, drink wine, and hear the truth I tell. They have brought forth naught, save chromioxyregmia. Know that, O Ganymedes. Came from afar one marvellous foul-favoured, whose sexless body was clad in a chemise woven of hell's fume. It broke my flagon, spilling on the ground the rubious wine, and boasted that the deed was worthy of a man. When thou, O lover of me, hast gained admittance to the banquet of thy love, thou wilt have lost and gained thyself. When once thou shalt have quaffed death's wine, thou wilt be apart from those who are, and from those who are no more. I grant that I am one with wine, and with the rapture that wine doth bring. But why doth the world blame me for that? Would God that all unlawful things brought rapture? For then I never should have seen the shadow of sound reason in the world. O God, thou hast broken my pitcher of wine. O God, thou hast shut against me the door of joy. O God, on the earth thou hast spilt my limpid wine. Wast thou, dust in the mouth of me, thyself, O God, elate with wine? I regard thee, O man, as vexed by the four elements and the seven heavens of which thou art made. Drink wine, O man, for more than four times have I told thee that, when thou once hast left the world, thou never mayst return. 
having laid two hundred snares about me thou hast said if thou puttest there thy foot death shall smite thee thou hast hid the snares and thou cursest smitest dead and namest rebel whoso shall fall therein thou whose mysterious being no mind can understand thou who for mine obedience carest no more than for my faults i though drowned in sin am satisfied because i confide in thee and by that i mean that i rely upon thy mercy if the affairs of the world depended not on obedience to law then every day would be a feast if there were no vain threats then each man here might have his heart's desire o rolling heavens ye do fill mine heart with endless sorrow tear from me the garment of joy change to water the breeze wherewith my body is refreshed turn to dust in my mouth the pure water that i drink o heart of me if thou couldst free thyself from all the disappointments that thy material body hath inherited thou wouldst become a soul in all its purity thou wouldst soar to heaven and in the firmament abide shame to thee then that thou camest here below to live give ear o potter if thou hast sound reason how long wilt thou do man wrong while fashioning his clay thou puttest on thy wheel the finger of fairy doon and king kosrob's hand oh what dost thou think of them there rose thou resemblest a young and enravishing beauty wine thou resemblest a ruby whose radiance rejoiceth the soul o fickle fortune each moment more strange thou appearest yet meseemeth i know thee in the kitchen of this world thou absorbest but the smoke immersed in studying life and death how long wilt thou let sorrow make of thee a prey this world containeth naught but loss for them who be its slaves then burst thy bonds and all will profit thee i seek not to torture men in sleep and i will not make them at midnight lamentably cry o god o god rely not on thy riches nor on thy beauty for on one night shall the one be taken from thee and on another night the other if at the outset thou hadst wished to make me know myself why didst thou then separate myself from me if at the outset thou didst not intend to leave me why didst thou hurl me worldward all amazed would to god that i might find some resting place where the road whereon i travel might have an end would to god that the bare idea were conceivable that after an hundred thousand years i might hope to be born again as grass is born again and again from the womb of the earth end of section section five of the rubaiyat of umar khayyam by frederick rolf this librivox recording is in the public domain verses four hundred and one to four hundred and sixty four while i cast the horoscope of the book of love suddenly from the ardent heart of a mage there came these words happy is he who in his dwelling hath a lover as fair as the moon and the prospect of a year-long night the constant sequence of spring and autumn causeth the leaves of life to fall drink wine o lover o me for wise men well have said that worldly care is a venom whose antidote is wine o lover o me drink wine drink wine in a garden and enjoy the presence of thy lover renege hypocrisy and knavery and say whether thou followest the doctrine of muhammad 
thou dost then fill thy wine cup from the bowl that ali as ganymedes taketh away at hestern eve i broke mine earthen cup against a stone i was in a rapture of wine when i did that senseless deed and methought the cup said once i was as thou art and as i am in thy turn thou shalt be bring wine o ganymedes for the flowers have burst into blossom cease from thy pious deeds o ganymedes before thanatos cometh come thou with a cup of rubious wine in hand and for a space enjoy the sweetness of thy lover near rise from thy couch o ganymedes give wine give limpid wine o ganymedes pour wine from pitcher to bowl o ganymedes before that of our skulls are made pitchers o ganymedes weariness encompasseth mine heart by cause of hypocrites rise and cheerfully serve me with a cup of wine o ganymedes and pledge for it both turban and prayer rug may be that mine arguments will rest on a more solid basis then if thou be wise examine and observe what thou hast brought in the beginning and what at the end thou wilt bear away thou dost drink wine thou sayest by cause that thou must die o lover o me whether thou drinkest or whether thou drinkest not nathless thou must die open the gate for me for thou alone canst open show me the way for thou showest the way of salvation i will give mine hand to none of those who wish to raise me for they must die but thou art only from ever lasting all that thou sayest to me is born of thine hate thou ceasest not to treat me as an atheist and faithless i am convinced of what i am and i avow it deal righteously and say whether it be for thee to treat me so be resigned to thy sorrow if thou desirest a remedy complain not of thy sufferings if thou wilt recover from them in poverty give thanks to providence if thou wishest wealth one day to be thy portion once i saw a mage in the house of a man brimful of wine of whom i asked whether he could give me news of those gone before he answered drink wine my friend for many men like us have gone away and have not returned all that i ask is a flagon of rubious wine a lyric bibliodirion the half of a loaf and an instant of rest in life if with these i might dwell in some ruin near thee o lover o me my bliss would be preferable to that of a sultan in his kingdom why argue so long concerning the five senses and the four elements o ganymedes to understand one is as difficult as to understand an hundred thousand o ganymedes man is but clay o ganymedes tune the lyre and bring wine for man is but breath o ganymedes how long wilt thou discourse of yasin and of barat o ganymedes give me my treat at the tavern o ganymedes the day when that treat is given will be for me the night of barat o ganymedes thou who hast bones and nerves and sinews in thy body place no foot beyond the limit of thy fate yield never to thine enemy were he rustan son of zal take nothing that could bind thee to thy lover were that lover hatem tai much hast thou been moved by the lips of rubius tinct much joy hast thou in thy cup of wine eagerly hast thou sought the sound of tambour of lyra and flute there they are mere accessories god bear me witness that inasmuch as thou hast not broken the bonds that bind thee to the world 
Thou wilt never be anything. Seeing that thou art under the ungovernable vault, bestir thyself, being in the world where calamity reigneth, drink wine. All, from beginning to end, is dust. Then act like a man who is on and not under the dust. Initiate in every mystery, now for what new orgies dost thou yearn? It is true that the world doth not move at thy will. But, O Aetas Proferus, thou breathest, then, breathing, rejoice. Where'er I turn my eyes, methinks I see the sward of paradise, and the brook of Calthir, that the plain, which hath come from hell, has been transformed into an heavenly abode. Then, there, let me rest with an heavenly lover. Follow no way, save that of the calendars. Seek for no dwelling, save the tavern. Occupy only with wine, with song, with thy lover. Take the wine cup in thine hand, the calabash on thy back. Drink, O lover o' me, and so cease from foolish words. Desirest thou to see thy life on firm foundation? Wouldst thou live for a time, heart free from sorrow? Live no moment without wine, and every breath will bring new pleasure to thy life. In this world, in this house of jugglery, it is useless to trust thy lover. Hear mine advice, and confide in none. Endure thy sufferings, hoping for no remedy. Be happy in thy sorrows, and seek not to share them with another. Two things there be, whereon wisdom is founded, and which ought to be numbered among the chief traditions, and they are, to eat nothing of all things that are eaten, and to stand aside from every living thing. How cometh it to pass that, at the dawn of spring, the green juice of the garden is sour? How cometh it to pass that, later, this same juice is sweet, and that, later still, the wine is bitter? If, of a piece of wood, with the aid of a pruning knife, a man may make a kithera, what wilt thou say when thou seest him, with this same pruning knife, to make a flute? Dost know why Electrion, at daybreak, makes his voice every instant to be heard? It is to remind thee, by the morning mirror, that from thy life another night has passed, and that, still, thou knowest nothing. Serve to me this rubine tulip tinctured wine. Let the flagon disgorge his pure blood. For little do I see to day except the wine cup of another lover whose heart is pure. O Ganymedes, pour for me wine tinctured like the flowers of the Judas tree. For my soul by sorrow is oppressed, O Ganymedes. Pour for me this nectar, for, perchance, it will free me from this changeful world by making me a stranger to myself, O Ganymedes. Thy cup, O Ganymedes, containeth liquid rubies. Serve, then, to my soul the glitter of those gems, O Ganymedes. Place in my hand this incomparable cup, O Ganymedes, for with it I will give new life to my soul. Wert thou a philosopher as great as Aristoteles, or as Bazurge Mir? Wert thou as potent as some Roman Caesar, or as some Chinese emperor? Drink unceasingly, drink wine from the cup of jam, for the tomb is the end of all. O oh, wert thou Bahram himself, the coffin is thine ultimate couch. Entering the workshop of the potter, I saw the workmen busy moulding flagons and pitcher handles, the first from the heads of kings, the last from the feet of beggars. Choose to be enraptured from thyself, if thou art wise, and, to that end, drink wine with the eternal drinkers. But thou art not wise, and rapture is not thine heart's desire, nor is it given to thee to taste its sweetness. 
lover o' me passing through the world drink from this pitcher drink this saving wine before that of my dust and thine the potter shall make pitchers fill thy cup drink it and pass a cup to me hear o lover o' me and while thou canst soothe the sorrows of the heart that loveth thee for the basilic grace that crowneth thee endureth not for ever like so many others it will be reft from thee when thou art unaware strive to lay up for thyself a treasure here before that thou art drowned in the cup of death before that the turn of time shall drive thee out beyond the world for yonder thou canst gain no profit if thou goest empty-handed thou dost dispose so of the quick and dead thou dost rule the rolling heavens unruly though they be what if i am wicked art not thou my master i thy slave what man is blameworthy when thou hast made all how can an orosang as i am unmoved look on when he shall find himself in joyful company circled round by wine and dancers in the time of roses o my king a garden a flute and a flagon of wine are more to be desired than paradise with its houris and its kalthir lo the clear light of the moon the splendour of wine o ganymedes lo the ravishing beauty rosy as balas ruby o ganymedes let naught of earth approach this heart that burneth like a fire let no winds fan it but in wine drench it o ganymedes o limpid wine wine of richest tincture fool that i be i will in such excess to drink thee that whoever shall perceive me from afar may mistake me for thee and say o master wine pray tell me whence thou comest hail a repose of my soul though thou art come i cannot trust mine eyes o oh, for love of god not for love of me drink wine drink wine until i truly know thee to an hytera quoth a sheikh thou art drunk and at any moment any man may clip thee who answered him again sheikh all that thou sayest that i am but thou art thou what thou dost seem to be like a ball the round world rolleth in an hollow and when drowned in wine i sleep therein i heed it no more than if it were a rolling grain of barley at hestern eve in the tavern i gave myself in pledge for a cup of wine and mine host unceasingly saith o oh, the excellent pledge the excellent pledge sometimes thou hidest showing thyself to none sometimes thou thyself displayest in all things created for thyself and for thine own pleasure let us produce these wondrous visions for thou art the image and the substance of the show and thine own beholder if thou couldst empeople all the world thy deed would be less gracious than to rejoice a sorrowing soul better for thee by kindness to enslave a free man than to free a thousand slaves they tell thee to drink no wine on pain of becoming a prey of torment and at the day of judgment of being burned with fire tis true but this moment which wine maketh joyous doth outvalue the treasure of this world and the next if it be thy pleasure to sow sorrow in an heart that is free from every care thou shouldst make a lifelong mourning for thy wits o lover o me go then and mourn for thou art a queer fool as often as thou canst get two measures of wine drink them drink in all conditions in all company wherein thou mayest be for he who so doeth is delivered from the annoyance of showing disdain or petty scorn 
he who hath a wheaten loaf a dish of mutton and two measures of wine can go and rest near some ruin with a youthful lover whose fair cheeks glow with the tinct of tulips ah not every sultan may achieve such joy if in a city thou dost achieve renown thou art deemed the arch sinner of thy kind if in thy corner thou dost live an eremite men esteem thee as an evil schemer better by far though thou wert elias the prophet or dios george's pontocrator so to live that thou knowest no man while no man knoweth thee were i free freely to use my will free from the torture of my fate free from the knowledge of the good and ill of this disordered world i would choose never to have come here never to remain here never to be forced to go away drink wine o lover o me for see how it endureth the cheeks of the world's most fair the lovers of ray how many times must i say that i have broken all my vows is it not better to break the bonds of an hundred vows than one pitcher of wine wine is mine o ganymedes also the presence of my lover and the chaunt of the morn ask not of me the renunciation of nessu o ganymedes how long wilt thou speak of the history of noah o ganymedes bring wine bring repose of soul o ganymedes nor do i see the means of becoming one with thee nor the possibility of living the space of a breath apart from thee i dare not share with any one the torments that i endure o oh, difficult case o oh, quaint sorrow o oh, delicious suffering hearken to the chaunt the time hath come to drink the morning wine o ganymedes ready am i o ganymedes here is wine there is the tavern can such a moment be for prayer silence o ganymedes so cease from prating of traditions and devotions drink wine o ganymedes hearken to the morning chaunt o lover o me whose dawn begetteth joy intone the responds and bring wine for the ceaseless sequence of the months from tear to d hath destroyed in this world a myriad of potentates like jam a myriad like king kosrov where lest thou pass for a clown among drinkers where lest thou win an ill name among the simethistic mages for whether thou drinkest or drinkest not if thou art fuel for the flames of hell thou art not fit to enter paradise I wish that God would reconstruct the world. I wish that he would do it now, so that I might see him at the work. I wish that he would blot out from the book of life my name, or else that he would increase from his mysterious store my means of living. God, open to me one door of thy benefits. Let me win my food so that I may not owe it to thy creatures. Oh, so enrapture me with wine that, with my consciousness my mental torments may disappear thou who hast been burned and burned again and invitest a third burning thou who only art worthy to fan the flames of hell how long wilt thou pray to god for umar's pardon what is thy connection with god what audacity driveth thee to teach him the use of mercy bereft of limpid wine i cannot live unless i drink the wall vine's juice my body is a burden that i cannot bear with what good will do i enslave myself to that delicious moment when ganymedes offereth me another cup which i no longer have the power to hold still to me remaineth a breath of life while ganymedes is my minister and among men discord yet doth reign I know that from Hester and Eve remaineth no more than a measure of wine, but I know not how long I have to live. Why should a man who hath a loaf of bread sufficing for two days, 
who can draw of water a throatful in a sharded pitcher, allow himself to serve one who is unworthy save to be his equal. Since the day when Cytheria and Astrachi first appeared in heaven, no man hath seen anything in this world to be preferred to rubious wine. I am obstupefied by cause of the wine vendors. For what goods can they buy sublimer than those they sell? Those who are endowed with knowledge and with virtue, whose profound wisdom hath made them like torches to their disciples, even these have made no step outside this depth of night. They have babbled of certain fables, and are withdrawn again to sleep. End of section. End of the Rubaiyat of Umar Khayyam by Frederick Rolfe. Recording by Algie Pug.